what is up guys welcome back to the channel so today i'm going to show you guys how to install that 3g brake booster and master cylinder that we got from the junkyard we're going to be installing it today on a second generation dsm uh, right now we have george right now busy going to town wiping some stuff down in the engine bay but anyways uh i'm going to show you guys how to do that um you can install this actually on a 1g dsm and a second generation dsm and believe it or not it does make a difference on the brakes all right so let's go All right, so this is what the 2G brake booster and master cylinder should look like. Um, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. It looks very identical to the to the 3G uh, brake booster. The only thing is that this is actually part of the master cylinder. Okay, it's integrated in here, and it makes the engine bay look a little cleaner as well. Um, but yeah the the pretty much the same procedure of removing removing okay that's the keyword removing uh the brake booster and the master and cylinder it's pretty much the same procedure if you guys haven't watched that video i recommend you guys to check that out on the removal of a 3g master cylinder um i'm gonna go ahead and start removing this guy here but one thing i do want to bring to your attention is if you guys if you guys don't have line wrenches right now would actually be the good time to stop whatever you're doing and uh, and uh, go to the hardware store and get some line wrenches and if you don't know what line wrenches look like they pretty much look like these okay that's what they look like um, you want to go ahead and go to the hardware store and get some of these because these will definitely save you uh and and they're gonna they're gonna save you from stripping stripping the the lines okay uh and also maybe a set of vice grips in case these are not you know giving um it all depends on where you live but nevertheless let's go ahead and get into this and uh i'm gonna start removing the 2g brake booster and master cylinder all together okay all right, so one thing I did forget to mention is we're also going to be removing the ABS. And that involves removing all these lines around here, these lines here. This is one good way to know if you have ABS uh, equipped on your car. Most likely, you're going to have these hard lines running through the strut tower here. So we're going to be rem removing the unit, the ABS unit. And uh, you obviously need to remove the front bumper in order for you to even access it but here it is uh we're gonna be removing it there's a series of 12 millimeter bolts all around here but before i even loosen those guys up i'm gonna actually loosen up the the lines here with the line wrench and then there's 12 millimeters all around here 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 and uh around the engine bay around here and then we're gonna remove the proportionary valve which lives right here and we're going to stop install a non abs uh proportionary valve okay just fyi for you guys all right so there's your abs proportionary brake brake valve there you have it um I loosened up the the nuts inside the cabin the four nuts there's a pin and also a clip to secure that pin into the brake pedal that's been done I loosened up these two 12 millimeter head bolts that hold onto this bracket here okay they're right here right here and then uh, I did loosen up the the lines here with the line wrench we got it pretty much somewhat free uh, one thing I did do because it was kind of interfering was I ended up removing uh, the brake booster line that leads up to the intake manifold. Make sure when you put this guy on, you put it in the right orientation because it does have a check valve. It has a check valve and you have to be aware of, you know, which, which way the check valve is facing. Okay, as you guys can see, 
you put it in this way because it says engine leads in that direction okay it goes to the engine uh yeah because if you end up doing it the other way you are gonna have such a rough time not just that you don't want to introduce boost into this brake booster or at least a new brake booster that we're gonna be installing okay uh nevertheless i'll be back once i wiggle this thing out of the way kind of a tight squeeze um, you can do it but what I'm gonna actually do is uh, make things a little better and I'm gonna actually use loosen, loosen up this uh, this uh, these bolts for the reservoir the clutch reservoir and then there's a bolt inside right here a 12 millimeter which uh, kind of gives us a little bit more slack as far as the power steering lines go so I'm gonna dig into here and then uh, we should be able to have a little bit more room in here to wiggle this thing out. So I'll be back. All right, so as you guys can see, I got this out of the way. There's a bolt that I said I did mention it actually lives right here. Um, and that was able to give me a little bit more slack as far as the parent power steering lines go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to remove this all in one piece, if possible, yeah. Um, if not, then we might have to remove another thing, but I think, uh, I'm gonna say we're good. I want to say. There we go. We got a boost. boost gauge. Right. Bam! So there's your 2G brake booster and master cylinder. Um, Let's go ahead and come out here and uh, compare it. So, as you guys can see, um, this bore is a little bit bigger compared to this one here. And uh, you guys can see the brake reservoir is built in into the master uh, cylinder. Okay, that's kind of good because it frees up a little bit of that engine bay room. Um, the clutter as well <clears throat> one thing to note okay you can already tell just by looking at it the booster itself is in bigger size compared to the 3g and also the master inside here the bore um, it's even bigger as well so what does that mean that means with uh, less pedal effort there's more fluid transfer which means you know your brakes are gonna grab sooner they're gonna grab harder um, this definitely benefits a lot of people that uh, do, you know, big brake swaps on, on their DSMs. And not just that, you can even run these on the stock all-wheel drive calipers. And I actually prefer, prefer it that way because they grab, trust me, they grab. Uh, once you pair them up to a 3G brake, brake booster master cylinder combo. Okay, so we're going to get ready to install this. But before that, I'm going to remove the ABS unit. Okay. All right, so we're looking at the ABS unit. Uh, there's one more zip tie I need to get to, which is actually right here. But this is what it should look, look like when you're about to get it off. There's a few 12 millimeter bolts holding onto it on the frame. Um, so I'm just gonna clip this last one. It should be able to come free a little, oh, well, get a little bit more loose. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, there's actually this cover here I'm gonna loosen up the 12 millimeters. There's two on this side and uh, one on this side. I'm gonna loosen those guys up. That should be able to remove this cover here and this assembly should drop down. Boom, and there it is. Um, this is what the ABS unit on a 2G DSM should look like, give or take. Um, the plate that I was talking to you guys about is this guy here that was holding onto it. So we just remove it and then we tuck this harness uh, more underneath right here i'm not going to worry about these plugs um just make sure they don't touch anything uh in the metal okay but we should be good uh as far as removing the abs unit um now what i'm going to focus on is i'm actually going to remove these lines like i mentioned the majority of these lines are going to have to be removed um there's some that actually lead up uh underneath the strut tower 
uh, to the brake line. Okay, so I'm gonna remove that. And then um, I wanna say this one as well. I have to remove the one for the driver's side. Um, the one that reaches or goes in here in this area here. So I'm gonna be removing all that and uh, I'll be back. If you guys need to access or get a general idea of what I'm talking about, this is the guy that you guys want to uh, remove here um, as well. Use your line wrenches uh, to get to get rid of that. Okay. We are about to put this guy back in here, but there is one thing you guys need to be aware of. So remember, I talked about this bore being bigger on uh, the 3G brake brake uh, master cylinder. Um, so there is one thing you guys need to do, and you guys need to actually uh, dent. Uh, this general area around here um, You'll see once you try to mock this thing up because it actually touches it uh, You just have to hit it a little bit um, Not super hard. Don't get too carried away, but um, You do have to dent it a little bit in order for this thing to clear in this particular area Okay, just something for you guys to be aware of All right, so uh, We secured the 3g brake booster slash master cylinder. This is how it should look on the engine bay once it's bolted on to the firewall those four bolts and also the pin that uh, secures it onto the brake brake pedal so now what we're going to be focusing on is uh, uh we're going to actually start to <clears throat> put in the hard brake lines uh we can go stainless steel but you know hard lines are fine uh we're going to go in that direction and uh, i'm going to show you guys which which way uh, you guys want these lines routed. So come here, I'm gonna show you. Uh... So this guy here, the very front one here, is supposed to go all the way up to the bottom of this proportionary valve, okay? And then this guy here is supposed to go to this guy here, okay? You guys see it on the, on the master cylinder, the brake master cylinder, so here to the right side, of the proportionary valve and the front area of the master on the left side of the very bottom okay and the middle ones here they go to each direction so the middle one here goes to the to the front uh brake line to the to, to the left side uh caliper okay this guy here and then this guy here goes to the passenger side over here to the caliper there to that brake line okay um so i'm gonna focus on that I'm just uh routing all these uh hard lines and then uh i'll be back once everything's installed all right all right you guys so i'm finally back i installed the brake lines here at the brake master cylinder the proportionary valve as i mentioned earlier so this goes here to the passenger side to that brake caliper to that brake line and then uh, this goes to the driver's side, to the caliper there. Um, this one here, like I mentioned, this one's actually gonna go to the very first one here of the, res of the <clears throat> brake master um, cylinder. And then this one here, finally, it's gonna go to the bottom here. Um, took a little bit of uh, bending and whatnot, just make sure you do not kink anything, okay? That's uh, very important. You can actually even get adapters to change over to uh, stainless steel lines, which actually will look much nicer. But this is what we had on on hand. And honest to God, this has worked for me for many years. Stopping cars going over 130s and uh, at the track um, worked just fine. And I know you guys are going to say, oh, well, at least some people are going to say, because uh, one thing for you guys to be aware of, I think uh, the head here, it's, it is, I believe it's a bubble flared fitting. And uh, people tell, you know, do say on the forums that you just got to be aware that you got to change that over uh, to that style there. I never had to do it. Not, not that I'm saying that I, you know, might have to in the future, but I never had to do it, at least in my case. So, um, yeah, you know what? I just screwed it on how, how it is and it's never failed okay for me at least for me so anyways uh hopefully you guys like this video if you guys did like it subscribe if you haven't done so already and um yeah i'll catch you guys out in the next one thanks for watching